Well, folks, uh, as you can see, I have Aristo with me, and uh, this is uh, my 3,200th video, and the title of this one is Memes and the Power to Choose. Aristo? Thank you, Ron. Well, we make a few more videos than we usually do now because uh, time allows. So I don't know, maybe we can make one after this at some point, you know, before I <laughs> leave for a certain interval. But I thought this time that instead of asking Ron what's going on, what the issues are, and, and doing like that, then I would just go ahead on a topic that I might be doing if I was making my own video. And uh, my thing is that um, I practice yoga, uh, but not the stretchy kind, meditation, more of the tantric tradition, uh, and even beyond that, because, you know, uh, I've been doing this for since the early 80s, at least. And uh, I, over a period of time, when you do such things and you research them and you practice, and even with the internet now that a ton more information of these traditions has surfaced, um, and things have clarified and the whole new, you know, I was very, very positive with the whole new age thing as far as a concept. We've had discussed this in the past that it's not really a new age, it's the old age uh, coming up with new perspectives. Well, the way this has evolved, it's become so marketed, so, um, how do you call it, just, just canned, canned spirituality, you know, just like there's canned religion or instant coffee or, you know, things like that. So. It's a kind of industrialized assembly line type of, of religion that caters to psychological uh, deficiency. Okay, when I say psychological deficiency, I mean you are using the spirituality or whatever you want to call it, because that's even an erroneous term in my opinion. But terms don't matter that much. But you just use it in order to um, create a socially pleasant atmosphere. Uh, let's all be calm. Let's all get along. Oh, and I noticed that, look, on, the, on YouTube, for example, today's internet culture, especially among millennials, is fraught with this, this thing called cancel culture. Basically, people point fingers at somebody. They call them a racist. They call them a, a pervert. Sometimes they take pictures of them and Photoshop them. And then you have a mob of all these other people that just love screwing with people and, and bullying them. All these people who claim they're triggered and they're bullied and they're traumatized love to be bullies, okay? And that is bad. Why? Not because of the act itself so much as the fact that it's bad for them because in the end, the boy who cried wolf gets eaten by the wolf <laughs> and so did the girl <laughs> and, and the LGBTQ, XYZ, whatever. Everybody gets eaten by the wolf when they lie chronically. Uh, no amount of complaining then or triggering or screaming or yelling is going to help because there's going to be one big ass. I told you so. Only people always say that about other people. So <clears throat> the real process, you know, the real process of awakening is difficult. It's challenging. Uh, there's a difference between the two. You know, one is voluntary difficulty. The other one is, oh, it's too much, you know, whatever. <laughs> as I see it. And it is also something that may seem like a sacrifice because you really get no benefits unless, you know, further down the line. You can lose your friends because you actually start acting differently. Uh, you can lose your ideals. You can lose your religion. You can lose your objectivity. You can lose your subjectivity because that completely changes. You can feel like you are a different person, but you're not. You are basically, esoterically speaking, at least in the beginning stages, like somebody who is symptoms of diabetes that everybody else considers normal, and they actually do in a way, you know, the way people are that, oh, I want to be completely unhealthy and loved for it, you know, and that's fine, but still you're unhealthy, and that can get worse, and it affects your mind, your body, and everything. So you have symptoms of diabetes, and then you go through a certain protocol of reversing those symptoms because you deal with the illness. And it's not an illness with germs and stuff, it's basically toxicity. You eat too much uh, sugars, too much toxins, insulin resistance, this, that, and the other. And so you 
suffer when you try to detox. You know, I went through a fast these, you know, last week or no, I went through a fast a few months ago and I had the worst symptoms of my life, you know, just some death flu type thing. I couldn't even move, you know, after two days because I was detoxing. And the body didn't have anywhere to put those toxins. You know, I wasn't doing a protocol or whatever. I just didn't eat for two days. And then I had to do it again and slowly detox some more. And, you know, I'm just coming over that. So um, it is hard. And diets are hard, you know, for a lot of people. Doing these kinds of things is hard. Esoterically, it's the same thing. The people that get through these things are the ones that have a passion for it, a real passion for it. And I'm making this intro, why is, why is this guy saying all this stuff? Because one of my peeves was to go through this, to see other people go through this, and then go into the pop culture of it, and just, just have to put up with a bunch of crap that's misrepresentational. And if I say anything, you know, everybody gets up in arms. So you either go forget, and then, then there's this other thing of, well, you're a <clears throat> spiritual person, and you basically you know, don't act like one. Well, who gives a shit? You know, that's the whole thing. I mean, somebody who's really into transforming gives a shit about important things, not about other people's views. Why? Why? And here we come to our title, because these views are, are structured by memes. What are memes? Memes are programs. They're ideas that act like genes. The person who coined the terms, I don't know who it was, but basically it's mental genes. They're just like a gene uh, holds protein information that basically determines how your body works. The, the memes hold information or, or patterns or, or influences that hold how your mind works. Okay, And so in these things, there's people coming out, I use the word ego, which has nothing to fucking do with anything because it's a Freudian term. If you don't use it like Freud, and that's the problem, because you have people who are former Christians that um, have, are, are abused by Christianity, and then they go and become materialists, and then they, get, they are disappointed with that, and then they find this other thing. And by then, all they want is some hopium and opium and hopium and dopium and all of these things in order to, you know, not to buffer the world. And so the world is a game. The world is an illusion. The world is this. The world, you know, well, yeah, there are certain sects of Indian religions, not Orient, not and Buddhism to a certain degree, uh, certain sects of Indian religion. Uh, I, you don't see it too much in other countries, except with Buddhism, that say that, well, you know, it, they are solipsistic. Because, and it's not because of what they are. I mean, a lot of Indian philosophies are against that. Uh, Shakti Tantra, you know, the Tantra, basically the wisdom of the power of consciousness, because Shakti is just the power of consciousness. It is anthropomorphized, anthropomorphized as a female force, like the goddess. But so people blend that in the West with, with paganism, and, and you have these, these people who feel bad about themselves of the feminine gender that scream, I am the goddess. You know, well, how many guys do you scream? Who, who do you see that go out and scream, I am the God, or I am God, you know, I am the God, you know. You see a white man coming out and search saying, I am the God, I am the God, you know. I don't think there's going to be a positive reaction to that. I don't think they're going to get more dates, you know. But the empowered females, you know, that scream this, and this has nothing to do with the gender issues and sexism and all that. This is people who are pointing fingers at other people who point fingers and say, you are selfish, you ego, and whatever, men and women, when in, react, when in reality, this is their own platform, the ego, what they interpret as the ego. Now, Freud's ego is different than the Greek word ego or ego, which means me, and different from the Sanskrit so-called cognate, which is ahamkara, which is basically the mental dynamic of self-identification, okay? The first, per which is not just the first personal pronoun, but it's a whole complex of uh, mental programming or not just programming, but essentially part of it's hardware in my opinion too, that basically we are an individual. 
you are a unique individual standing over there, separate from everything else, distinct, uh, and, but you have an ego. No, you are not an individual who has an ego, you know. You, the ego is what lets you determine, you know, in terms of the, because, and I use the Indian term, ahamkara is ego, because people are allegedly spiritual. They're not using Greek grammar, and then they're not using Freudian terminology in their own eyes. So you have people who use these Christian, and karma, another word. Karma has nothing to do with the Christian idea of divine justice. That's an idea of some daddy God standing on a throne, pounding people over the head, or setting up the universe to pound them over the head if they do wrong things. That is not what karma is. Karma is simply cause and effect. I've said this before. Now, why am I saying this again? Because these are all memes. These are all mental conceptions of things. And so people think they use, you know, they have all of these subconscious things that they're not aware of. Because if they were aware of them, they would be thinking twice if they had a heart. But people are saying, I don't give a shit. I want to be the individual that dominates over others without having to be challenged for it, okay? Can I be an alpha male while pretending I'm a beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, whatever, omega male, all the way down the line? You see, the difference between the alpha male and the rest of them is that the rest of them uh, don't face the challenges, the aggression, the, the whatever that the alpha male does, but the alpha male has to keep their position, so they have to be a badass or whatever. It's because everybody wants to be on top. The pyramid exists, whether we're peaceful or not, because that is who we are. It's not fatalistic. It's not deterministic in the sense because determinism goes against your nature, as I understand it, because we look at it negatively because we say, well, the universe says we have to do it this way, and I don't want to. Uh, my nature isn't that. Well, in, if you're using spirituality, if you're prostituting the spiritual terminologies uh, in order to get by and do all this crap, you know, I mean, let's go back to Jesus. Who cast the first stone? People are casting stones on the internet all over the place. Now imagine, imagine that episode with the prostitute and the stones. Um, what if everybody said, fuck you, Jesus. And I'm sorry, I'm demonetizing your video by swearing now. See, now you can't even say four-letter words anymore. But fuck you, Jesus. Let's all make a crowd and pick up stones so he can't finger any of us. Let's all just together throw the stones at the prostitute and then go, who, me? It was the system that did it. It was the crowd that did it. It was the culture that did it. It's that's fault. No, what, what the hell are those things? Those are memes. So memes serve us as scapegoats, and they laugh when, you know, if memes were self-aware, they don't care. They serve us as excuses, but they also are useful because the same, they play the role of genes. We cannot exist without them because we think. Any thought and concept you have is a meme. Your Christianity is a meme. Your idea that God has to come down and help us is a meme. And if you say, well, uh, you know, if this isn't true, then I, I disagree. I, I just want to kill myself. You know, well, yeah, that's how people use memes. They can't stand something being a certain way, so they take the meme and just paint the inside of their mental house with it like some people decorate. These are harsh uh, realizations, you know, and it's not just my opinion, but I'm not going to prove any of this. Anybody who claims to be spiritual or, or esoteric has confronted this, and not for other people. They've confronted this in themselves, okay? So another thing that is uh, unrealistic is to play the victim because we are all victims, okay? So somebody who does all kinds of things that hurt people and use the victim card and say, well, you're accusing me, I'm just a victim. Let's put it this way. Um, people say, oh, you're blaming the victim. Well, uh, there's a bank robbery, okay? Oh, there's a robbery of somebody's house. The crook goes in, you know, then the cops come. The crook, uh, you know, uh, beats people up in the house. They take their belongings. They try to leave. They leave. The cops apprehend them, hit them over the head with a bludgeon, uh, you know, whatever they do. And the guy says, I'm a victim here. 
And you see it on TV all the time, and everybody's, oh, you're a victim, well, take that, Mr. Victim. You know, where the victims are the people who are robbed. But these, on the internet, that's not so clear cut, because there's so much lying, there's bullshit, uh, and because people are lying to themselves. So in the end, what these idiots are gonna do is turn the tables on them, and they will become the victims. That's how people become victims. The witch hunts didn't start because just the Catholics were like, oh, you know, um, these herbalists here, these innocent herbalists are in our way. Yeah, that's, that's the reason. But they would have had to be far more, you know, the reason that this could actually happen was because the people colluded. Any atrocity that happens is because the people collude for whatever reason. Sometimes you have to defend yourself or whatever or survive or whatever. But no, these were actual people who use the cult means. You know, somebody like sits there and it's a true um, intense ill on other people. And uh, you know, when something doesn't happen because the other person is more pure or whatever, whatever reason, you know, then they will go and point fingers and try to destroy them. And this is what happened. Most of the people who got burned during the witch hunts were innocent. That doesn't mean there were any real, and I'm not talking the pagan Wiccan witch. I'm talking about uh, badass, mean-ass, mean-spirited people who used occultism, you know, or even poisons, or I don't know what, to get their way and then pointed the finger at somebody else. That's how psychopathy works. Now, psychopathy is in. So the memes that are being promoted and whereas the promoters are like, oh, me, I didn't promote anything. We're just doing movies and books and stuff. You know, I'm promoting nothing. Or we're starting rumors and whatever. Or these are the people. No, these are promoted. And they don't have to be promoted systematically. All you have to do is have somebody repeat something. You know, you, all you have to do, and it's well known, for example, in America, that there's Democratic Party and the Republican Party. I saw this in some video of somebody where it's like, yeah, this is verified that uh, they have shills on social media that spread their propaganda. You know, a lot of Trump bashers actually work for the Democratic Party or for some other organization or they're, you know, get something uh, on both ends of the spectrum. So the Internet is basically a, a propaganda platform. That's what they want it to be. It's not a platform of information anymore. Again, memes. So where does the power to choose to come in? Well, the power to choose is not what you think. Oh, you can choose. No, you can't because, let me put it this way, somebody comes and slaps you. Do you, how do you choose to react then? Because most people will hurt. And so reacting to pain is instinctive. Now, some people will react to pain like be more docile than their, others will get more aggressive. Others will try to pretend it didn't happen. Others will try to think about it and find a solution to it. This, is, this depends on how you are. Not who you are, but how you are. Okay? In these kinds of transformational dynamics, the so-called spirituality, who you are doesn't fucking matter. There is no who you are. That's an artificial thing. That's a meme. That's, a, that's your license plate on your car. Is your license plate on your car who the car is, what the car is? No, the car is a make, model, this. You know, it's not the license plate, it's not the driver's license, it's not the registration number, it's the car. The straw man that you guys talk about in the alternative stuff we used to talk about, you know, that's just numbers, it's a corpse. It's not even a corpse, it's a ghost. You know, it doesn't truly exist outside of its functional, mean uh, nature. So I'm saying all of this, you know. And it's almost like the end of the video here. I've gotten, I was going to say all of these other things. It's an introduction actually to a whole other soul. But how do we deal with this? Because what spirituality truly does, first, it addresses the mind. Okay? And the mind is not the brain. The brain is an extension, a physical extension of the nervous system. What the brain does is uh, essentially a specialized form of mental processes. But these processes are rooted in the nervous system, which has certain little brains in it that people, some people have identified with chakras, which are artificial dynamics. They're also memes. Chakras are simply meditational uh, patterns. 
They got petals and they got this and that. All of it's symbolic. They have gods. You meditate on it in order to bring a certain empowerment, a certain consciousness into an area of the body and awaken that area of the body. Okay? It is not your body. You don't own it. The universe is not a capitalist. It's not a communist either. Okay? It is nothing that can have a meme tell it what it is. Memes are natural. We create them. We imbibe them. We reject them. We accept them. That is the power to choose. However, first, a certain cleansing needs to happen. Okay? And when that cleansing happens, you will lose memes or see them for what they are and not want them. And that will change who you are for other people. But that is not what really happens. What changes is how you are for other people. If you go around and simply behave a little bit differently to your family, they will think you are not the man you used to be. Mm -hmm. Literally. You know, just because you change a few behaviors, they don't have to become worse. Maybe you're more cheerful, you know. But that's different because it suits them. It's more pleasant, so they'll incorporate the meme into the previous memes. People are manipulated that way. And they judge it, you know. They evaluate it negatively. That's what, in this case, judgment means. Judgment is never positive, according to some people. But let's say they evaluate it in a way that uh, they want it to stop. Who are you? So where is our power to choose? The power to choose comes from uh, owning it. And owning it is not as easy as making a decision. Because you can make a whole bunch of decisions just to be different. But if your heart is somewhere else, where is your heart? You know, if your heart is somewhere else, then there's going to be a strain and there's going to be a rebound effect. And the world outside is going to reflect that to you and tell you, you're really being a hypocrite, dude. You don't have to do this. You know, you can actually be more honest in a caring way or whatever you want to do it. It depends on who you are. But then again, see, this is my mental body speaking. So we are different. We are the same. We have potential. We are free, but we are not free. All of these things mesh. And the problem to me is, is why do you really care what you are unless you desire to apply yourself with that, like a map, okay? I am this. And that, that doesn't matter what you are. It's how you are. So you want to know basically like a doctor diagnosis uh, somebody and say, okay, my health is here. It's like this. This is how my health is. It's not very good. Uh, it's compromised. So I need to take these measures. And when and that's very intimate. You see, that's where compassion now. This is this is where somebody should be compassionate, if they have compassion. I mean, I'm not saying you should because I'm telling you again to clarify for the sensitivity of certain people. You know. To the point that everybody's just going to get pissed off and say, fuck sensitivity, man. Just tell it like it is. No. I'm going to talk like these others want me to talk. And so we should all do that and just see how fucked up it is. Because that is also honesty. That is the power to choose in the sense of, well, if you really want to get it moving, just cater to the bastard. There's somebody that said, well, if you had something to hide, you wouldn't apologize. Because some people, literally, they don't want trouble. So they'll go, okay, I, I don't know if I offended you, I don't, you know, whatever, but if I did, I'm sorry. Okay? Wrong move. Because that's when somebody goes in for the kill. But does it mean you have to go in for the kill yourself? Our options are like this. What can I do? This. And I cannot or anybody cannot convince you because I'm from my perspective. The perspective of this uh, dynamic of my being that may be, it's not an illusion. But the fact is that first comes consciousness and then comes the mind and, and all these programs and everything. And the body's there too and everything. But just because your body perishes, the body perishes, the physical body dissolves, doesn't mean it's an illusion. It's just that its form is not eternal. It's, I've said this before. Is water an illusion just because it changes shape? Is it, is it deceptive? Is it, an, you know, is it sneaky because it doesn't sit? Or what's your true form, goddammit, water? 
these are our conceptions. So I'm going to stop the video right now like this, okay? It has been a little bit of a rant. So where is the power to choose? Well, that is why we do spirituality. We don't do it just to bask in the infinite. I'm speaking from the perspective of human embodiment, okay? If it's not an illusion, then it doesn't go away. It's just think about it this way. The universe never created hum humans before. Oh, but there's all these alien races. No, there isn't. What alien races? That's all propaganda. All the UFOs people have ever seen are goddamn experimental aircraft or holograms, you know. Because if there are so-called extraterrestrial races, they are not physical because the universe is 95% plasma. And plasma is everywhere and doesn't obey the so-called laws of classical physics, you know. So some, some entity in the plasma field could be on the other side of the galaxy and then do all this time warp and space warp and all of these things because they're made of light or electric fields, you know, at least electromagnetic fields. And they're physical. Electromagnetic fields are physical. It's energy, but it's also material. It's not organic, it's not molecular, but it's material. A material energetic. So there are many things that I don't question. I just have tossed them out after years of questioning. And these are memes, okay? So the fact is that you're going to respond to a meme because that's the way the mind works. The mind works that way. And the mind is the focus of spirituality. Basically, if you want to think about it in religious terms, the divine comes in and says, look, you know, I can't be you as you because I don't want to be me in the body of Ron Van Dyke. I want to be Ron Van Dyke. Okay. So somebody says, well, we're spirits having a physical experience. No, you are and you are existence having an experience, period. Because existence itself, or the divine, or the cause, or whatever, doesn't experience anything but its own true nature. So that's the starting point. So it knows this is real, and this is true. But what comes afterwards? Let's make it. So if I create something, it's wrong, it's false, it's, it's an illusion. All creation, then, is an illusion. Let's go back to doing nothing, being, just being. Well, why are we here in the first place, idiots? You know, and I say idiots because truly it's short-sightedness. And why? Because esoteric unfolding, that's what it's for. Okay. And I close with that this time. Esoteric unfolding is for you to be healthy and whole. It is not for you to go back to the womb of creation. And it's not for you to pretend you're a good person or even be a good person because most of the saints were assholes. There are accounts of saints in India and in England, these people were like, or mad. Oh no, they're just saints, they act crazy. No, they're assholes because they can get away with it and they're honest about it. They're not doing it because they're traumatized. They're doing it because you are literally triggering that experience. That's what triggering is. Because if somebody's completely clear, for real, and another person comes in, then that person acts like a mirror, okay? And it takes two to form a mirror. Okay, a reflection cannot happen with one. God experiences themselves. God has experiences themselves, itself, even though that doesn't even apply because there is no it. But they do that through creation and through relationship. It's a relationship. So relationship requires multiplicity. That's the beauty of creation. That's the gift of it. So if you're saying creation is an illusion, then you're saying relationship is an illusion, which means your relationship to the divine is an illusion because you don't exist. Then what does exist? What is existence? Who gives a shit? Because we're here already. <laughs> what we care about is how in order to navigate and, and, and acquire or cultivate or manifest the power to choose, okay? And I'm not going to be apologetic because, you know, well, I'll, we'll do another video and I'll be gone. There you go. <laughs> so it doesn't matter, you know, people. Just, you know, you can be who you are. You, you, but you have to, if you want to truly be who you are in Hindu, just keep track of your memes. Now, next time, unless some other topic comes, which it will come, uh, but I still want to go I'll, I'll give a breakdown on a certain perspective on how the mind, the transforming mind works, because that's your key. That's where you are, you know.
Trashing it serves only somebody else. It doesn't serve the truth. Our, our topic used to be, before it was too big again, you know, it was just means truth and the power to choose. And I say, take away truth. I said, well, truth is, you know, why don't we just take the power, the power to choose away, and just say power to choose. Because truth is always there, okay? We don't have to really focus on it. It's there. What we look at is variations of how reality can express truth. And some of them are the opposite of truth. See, our conceptions themselves uh, are very, very flexible, but we have to keep track of the beams if we want that kind of flexibility. Anyways, I hope this rant was at least somewhat entertaining, if not informative. <laughs> so thank you for listening. Well, thank you, Aristo. And uh, on that note, we'll say peace. I almost said Namaste. <laughs> Namaste. <laughs> I am one with you, you know, but am I one with you? I am one with you at a level that you are not aware of. And I'm not really embodying that level because my focus is elsewhere, you know. God might be in me, but who gives a shit? God doesn't give a shit, you know. That's just the natural way. It's no big deal, you know. So it doesn't matter. And I don't use that or the I, me, the dynamic where, you know, Instead, I respect and honor and feel the presence of an aware or awareness as a whole that so much appreciates this, this, this whole capacity to form memes and create and think and all of this in this way. So again, once again, thank you. And I will say namaste because it's a pleasure and a privilege. Okay. okay. So okay. that's it. Thank you, Aristo.